The Air Force's labs helped develop the technology that led to the GPS that we use every day. Now, a lot of people don't know that the Global Positioning System or GPS satellites are actually Air Force assets that we all use. The Air Force became the prime lead on the development of the GPS satellites and AFOSR scientists and researchers helped develop foundational technology like more accurate atomic clocks. And the Air Force worked on a program called Project 621B that specified that these atomic clocks would go into the satellites. Now, the way that GPS works is uh, the GPS satellites have atomic clocks and there are over 30 GPS satellites that are in orbit and by using the timing from these very precise atomic clocks and comparing that between the different satellites, that gives us our location. And that technology is called PNT, or Position Navigation and Timing. And the labs are working on more advanced PNT systems today, including the test site, test satellite, the NTS-3, which is a very important Vanguard program in AFRL. And we're gonna jump back in time to look at developing some of the knowledge about how human beings exist in space, dealing with cosmic rays, being in confined spaces. And one of these programs was called Man High. And there were three flights in this gondola and the highest flight went up to 101,000 feet. And this program was to understand how the human body copes with cosmic rays, and, and being in a confined space like future astronauts would be. Now this type of work would relate to what the 7-Eleven Human Performance Wing does today. Another program involved uh, with understanding uh, humans and going to space was the Excelsior program. So this tested about how to parachute from very high altitudes. And with Project Excelsior, Captain Joseph Kittinger parachuted from just a little over 100,000 feet. And there was an Air Force engineer who developed a special parachute uh, by his name is Francis Beaupre that was a multi-stage parachute. And one of the challenges with parachuting from this high of an altitude was to prevent the parachutists from spinning, which uh, if that happened, it could ultimately kill them. This jump by Joseph Kittinger remained the record for the highest jump for several decades after the event. I'm surrounded by early crewed space vehicles and the labs played an important part in the ultimate selection of the famed Mercury 7. So 31 potential astronaut candidates came to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and they were subjected to a number of different tests, psychological and phys physical, heat, cold, time in the centrifuge. Uh, and speaking of centrifuges, the 7-Eleven has the only human rated centrifuge in the Department of Defense, and NASA uses that centrifuge even today. Well, from these tests that were at uh, Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, they ultimately selected the Mercury 7. Now behind me are lifting bodies, uh, the two different X-24s, X-24A and X-24B. Now this was a further development of some of the lifting body testing done with the START program. And the reason for lifting bodies is that it has less surface area to deal with aerodynamic heating coming into the atmosphere from spaceflight. Now these X-24s played a very important part in developing the technology that ultimately led to the space shuttle. The X-15 was a milestone research aircraft in the development of hypersonic vehicles and space flight. And this aircraft flew in the very late 1950s and 1960s going as fast as Mach 6.72. And the labs developed important technologies with the X-15. In particular, materials were very important a lot of the interior of the X-15 is made out of titanium. And at the end of World War II, the Army Air Forces realized that faster aircraft was gonna, they were gonna require better materials, heat resistant, stronger materials. And the labs helped develop titanium alloys in the late 1940s and 1950s that were used with the X-15. Now, kind of neat fact about the X-15, it flew so high 
that some of the pilots of the X-15 were actually given astronaut wings. Now, the very first X aircraft was the X-1, and that's the aircraft that broke the speed of sound that Chuck Yeager was flying in October of 1947. But what a lot of people don't know is that there were more than one X-1 aircraft built. Now first, before talking about the X X-1s, X aircraft just basically means a research aircraft. And although there are a few exceptions here and there, for the most part, X aircraft were made not to develop a production aircraft, but to test a, a type of technology. In the case of this X-1, the X-1B, this is a lengthened X-1, so it's a bit longer, carries more fuel than the original X-1. And this one was used to test reaction control. And what that means is basically using puffs of air on the wingtips, because in space, there's no aerodynamic lift or control. Now, this technology uh, using reaction control was applied to the later X-15, which we just saw just a moment ago. And what's kind of neat, this uh, X-1B was flown by Neil Armstrong during this program.